Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm um, the school counselor for the Henry Ford Early College programs. We have three different programs, and each one focuses on a different career area. The first one is the Henry Ford Early College Health Career School. The second one is the Henry Ford Early College Advanced Manufacturing School. And finally, the Henry Ford Early College Pre-Education School. We are currently accepting applications and we're looking for students who are interested in careers um, in these um, programs because we have, we have programs that are ready for students to start in these careers, sorry. Okay, so our building is, do I have to press something? Okay, I'll, just a little bit of background on our um, program. Our building is located on the campus of Henry Ford College so students who attend our school will start with us in the ninth grade. And we are a five-year high school program, so they would be committed to attending for five years. Um, traditionally, um, high school is a four-year program, so within that extra year, students would earn both a high school diploma and up to two years of college courses or an associate degree. Students can also get a certification in one of many programs available, such as computers, welding, um, teaching, nursing, and I'm going to talk more about those things later. Students can also choose to um, attend our school and get transferable credit, which is what the vast, not the vast majority, but a large number of our students choose to do, which will give them a head start to transfer their credits and work towards attaining a bachelor's degree. Our schools have a partnership with Ford NGL for the manufacturing school, Henry Ford Health System for the health school, and our very own, own Dearborn Public Schools for the education school. Um, we, do, we do, one important thing, I always get this question, we do not offer sports at our schools. We don't have sports, we don't have extracurricular activities, we don't have band or orchestra or yearbook. But um, it is important to note that students within our school district can participate in these extracurricular activities at their home high school as long as they are offered after school. We do offer transportation to our students. Um, so students would be bused from their neighborhood school to their home high school that they would have attended had they not come to our school. And then from, from their home high school, they would be bused to the Henry Ford Early College. Um, so to summarize, successful completion of any of these three early college programs that I mentioned result in students earning a high school diploma, a potential associate's degree if they meet the requirements, a career-ready certificate that will allow them to get a career or a job straight out of high school, and or up to two years of transferable college credit. And um, I need to add the most important part, this is all at no cost to the students or their families. So just to talk about a little bit about what um, ninth grade would look like in the health school, it's really it's the same, and when students start in ninth grade, it's the same classes they would take at a traditional high school. For the health school, they would do their language arts, math, world history, biology, and PE. And in addition to that, the only difference is, is there's an extra science class. If you notice, there's a physics class that students are required to take. Um, we are the only high school that has students, have students take um, physics in ninth grade because we are preparing students to work in the health career, so that is going to be very heavy in science. For the ninth grade manufacturing and education school, you have your core classes as well that you would traditionally have in a tradi traditional high school, language arts, math, world history, biology, PE. And then we have a class called Math Language Arts Plus. This is just an enrichment class that focuses on critical thinking, reading and writing skills that helps our students become college and career ready because they are going to start taking college classes the very following year in 10th grade. <clears throat> so in the 10th grade, for our health, health students, they have the, all the core classes, language arts, math, chemistry, again, an additional science class, anatomy and physiology, which is a class that they will take at the college. Um, and we've gotten many college instructors come back and tell our um, teachers, instructors, that our students do, a, do an amazing job in that class. And 
our teachers really prepare students for this class, U.S. history. And starting in 10th grade, our students take their very first college courses. Um, these classes are taught in-house. So the Henry Ford College professors come to our school and they teach our students in-house. So the students are not out on the main campus just yet. We try to keep them um, with us until um, 11th grade that changes. So for the manufacturing school as well, they'll take their first college classes and they're also taught in-house in addition to their core classes. Starting in 11th grade, this is where things start to change. Students will have either two or three high school classes, depending on their math placement for that, for that year. So they'll have their language arts, social studies, government, or econ. And depending on their math placement, they'll either have a high school math class or a college math class. So essentially, they are a part-time college student and a part-time high school student. This is where students are now integrated onto the main campus, taking classes on the main college campus, and they're free to schedule their classes at any times after their high school classes. Um, I will meet, me usually meet with students every semester starting, well, I meet with them in 10th grade as well, but starting from 10th grade through the 13th year, every student, I meet with individually to schedule them based on the career goals that they have each semester. Starting in 12th grade, 12th and 13th year, students are full-time college students. So they don't have any time limitations as to what time they could schedule their classes. They could take an online class, a Saturday class, a Tuesday, Thursday class um, in the morning. So they're full-time college students taking three to four college classes, which could be anywhere between 12 to 16 credits. <clears throat> Some of the um, health career programs that we have, um, most of these health career programs, most of the programs for all of our schools actually are two-year associate degrees that lead to a job right out of high school. Um, just to name a few, nursing is one of our most popular and most rigorous programs that students choose to go into. Um, so essentially at 19 years old, we, ha we have students graduating at, as RNs and working in hospitals. And many times we hear stories of um, students getting a job and then their employer actually pays for them to go on and get their bachelor's degree. A radiographer, ophthalmic technician, again, all lead to a job straight out of high school. We also have pre-professional degrees for students who are looking for a little bit more than the typical associate degree and wanna go on to get a bachelor's or a doctor in any of the pre-professional doctors, pharmacists, physical therapists, um, jobs, careers. For the manufacturing school, again, same concept. We have um, careers that will lead to high need, high skill, high job, high wage jobs right out of school, um, such as automotive, welding, HVAC, computer information systems, electronics. For the pre-education school, at the end of the um, five years, our students have about half of a bachelor's degree finished. And when they leave us, they have a paraprofessional certificate that will allow them to work in schools and continue on to get their education to become a teacher. So they can get a cert um, an associate degree in any of these areas, elementary education, secondary education, special education, child development. And like I said, half they'll be well on their way to finishing half of the bachelor's degree and leave with a professional certificate that will allow them to work right away. From uh, the very first day students are with us, starting in ninth and 10th grade, our students get hands-on experience. So the students in the health school in ninth and 10th grade attend um, Henry Ford Hospital downtown to do um, clinical rotations where they job shadow nurses, physical therapy assistants, pharmacy technicians, respiratory therapists, to get a feel for what these people do day in and day out. They get to see it, experience it, figure out where their interest lies so that when they come back to school and I meet with them during their 10th grade year, they know that, okay, this is a career that I could see myself doing or maybe this isn't where I can absolutely not see myself doing this. And we have that conversation based on their experiences from the clinical rotations that they attend. 
for the manufacturing school, students in ninth grade also do rotations on campus um, where they get to see machines and tools and how they work. And um, they attend manufacturing day at Ford. Starting in the 10th grade, we, have, we actually have Ford employees that come to our school and mentor students and meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. In 11th grade, we have um, these Six Star Saturdays that we have students um, attend. And if students attend all Six Star Saturdays, it puts them in a position to be for, in a position to get a potential scholarship with Ford during their 12th grade year. For the education school, we have students that visit classrooms, Dearborn schools classrooms twice a month. They visit elementary schools. Usually the school is very close to where they um, live so they can walk to the school and then walk home at the end of the day where they're shadowing teachers all day, interacting with students, teaching lessons, and they're learning what it means to be a professional, being on time, being responsible, and so on. Okay, next I'm gonna introduce um, my colleague, Mr. Gothrow. He'll talk more about the Collegiate Academy, which is another secondary option. Thank you. It's uh, very similar to uh, Henry Ford Early College. It's uh, another early middle college program that Dearborn Schools offered. Offer. So it's, it's a five-year program uh, where students can earn an associate's degree at the same time they're earning their, their high school diploma. Uh, so one of the, the greatest benefits of this is, is that it's free. As, as Ms. Bazzi mentioned, um, Dearborn Schools covers all the costs of tuition, uh, including textbooks. This is, this is an extra benefit that dual enrollment students do not have. Um, and just to give you some, some idea of, of the benefit of this program, uh, you know, if students in a typical high school, they're going to they're gonna go to high school for four years. Uh, many of our students end up at Henry Ford College afterwards, and, and they might do two years there uh, to get an associate's degree. So after six years, they've got their high school diploma. They've got 60 college credits from Henry Ford College. Um, so in, in our program in the Collegiate Academy, uh, they're doing all of that in five years. And not only that, it's, it's covered, it's, it's completely free. Um, our students, when they're taking their college classes, they have the, the flexibility to make their own schedules. Uh, they're choosing their sections, they're choosing the professors, they're choosing the days and times that they're taking their classes. And all the classes that they take um, are transferable to universities, including U of M Ann Arbor. You know, Henry Ford College would not be in business if their classes didn't transfer to, to a majority of the universities in the area. Um, so, uh, you know, if you do the math, our students, by the time they finish a bachelor's degree, they're actually finishing that degree one year earlier than a typical high school student would. And again, their first two years uh, in, in the college setting are completely free. Um, one of the differences between uh, the Collegiate Academy and the early college programs is that students remain in their home high school. So they're gonna be Thunderbirds, they're gonna be pioneers, they're gonna be tractors uh, throughout their time in high school, uh, which means that they can participate in, in all the, the, uh, the school activities, you know, marching band and sports, yearbook, basically any extracurricular activity that's offered through the high schools they can, they can participate in all the way up through 12th grade. Um, also, you know, even though the students will not get their high school diploma until after their fifth year in the program, they still get the benefit of walking with their class uh, in commencement. You know, they get to toss their, their, uh, their, their caps and celebrate with their, with their classmates. You know, as a parent, you could throw a graduation party after their 12th grade year, even though they're not technically going to get their high school diploma until after the fifth year in the program. Um, so in the Collegiate Academy, it's a bit different than the early college. Um, you know, they're ninth and 10th grade. They're, they're just regular high school students at their home high school. Um, in 11th grade is, is really when the program starts. They're gonna begin taking classes, um, three classes they'll take in 11th grade, spread out th uh, through the two semesters. And they're not gonna take any classes in their 13th year. So um, 
they won't be in the high school at all. They'll be taking all college classes during their 13th year. When it's all said and done, again, they're going to have their high school diploma. They're going to have 60, year, uh, 60 credits or more that they can transfer to university. Um, if, if all goes well, they could earn an associate's degree. Uh, that, that depends on whether they get the specific credits that they need for a particular associate's degree. And I say if all goes well because, you know, we're not giving out credits here. You know, these students have to earn their keep. Uh, you know, we have students that are, are straight-A students, and they, they find their first uh, struggle in, in this program because they're taking really rigorous science and math classes. So it's not an easy program. It's not for everyone, and there's no guarantee that they're going to get an associate's degree, that they're going to get 60 credits. They have to earn everything that they get. So the typical sequence in the program in 11th grade, as I mentioned, um, they're going to be, we're going to ease them into the program. Uh, in the first semester, they're going to take five high school classes at their home high school, and they'll take one, um, one college class. It's college success, and it, it is what it describes. It's, it's basically teaching students how to, to manage college and do so successfully. Um, in the second semester of 11th grade, they take two college classes um, and four high school classes. So it looks very similar. They're, they're taking six classes both semesters like a, a normal high school schedule. In 12th grade, things look quite a bit different. Uh, they're only going to take one, one college, or I'm sorry, one high school class at their home high school. And then they're essentially taking a full-time college schedule. That could be three classes. That could be four classes. It really depends on the classes that they're taking. And what I tell all the students um, in the Collegiate Academy is, is when, they, when they get to their 12th grade year, uh, you need to treat that year as your freshman year of college. You're not a senior because you don't have any room for senioritis. If you get senioritis in 12th grade in the Collegiate Academy, you are going to really struggle in your college classes and, and it's, it's not going to be a good situation for you. So treat that year as your freshman year of college. And then the 13th year, uh, you know, students would say, why would I want to be in this program? Why would I want to add an extra year to high school? I, I want to get out of high school and get on to college as quickly as, as you can. Well, the fifth year in the program, the 13th year we call it, they don't really feel like high school students at all. They're not, they're not in a high school class at all. They're not in the high school building at all. They're, they're full-time students at Henry Ford College. Um, so they, they really do feel like college students. In fact, our 12th grade students, really do not feel like, like high school students at all. They're, they're primarily on the college campus and they're living a college life, which means they don't have college classes every day. They might have, have class at all on Fridays or, or, or Tuesdays, depending on their schedule. Um, they do have to take a senior math class, but again, that's a class that's gonna be at Henry Ford College. So I actually took a look at some numbers and, and tried to see what a, a, a parent or a student in the Collegiate Academy would save if they joined our program. And at University of Michigan uh, Ann Arbor during this, this school year, if you look at uh, two years of school, you're looking at almost $60,000 that it's gonna cost for room and board and tuition and fees and books. At Wayne State, over $51,000. So you know, if you can imagine that savings for those two years, uh, it, it's just a huge benefit to families and to students. Uh, so there is support for our students in this program. I am the counselor uh, uh, through, throughout the program for the students, so I, I really walk them through every single semester. I help them choose the classes they're going to take. I, I help them figure out what careers they want to go into and the majors they're going to choose. So they're not, they're not on their own. I walk them through the program and make sure they're taking the right courses that are going to transfer. Um, that they can get the, uh, what's called the Michigan Transfer Agreement and make sure that they're fulfilling the graduation uh, and, and general education requirements that every university has. I help them through the graduation process, through college applications, and, and help them apply for scholarships as well. But they don't only have me to, to go to. They, they have um, really all the resources available at Henry Ford College. They can access, they can go to advisors there. They can go to other counselors um, there's tutoring available that's free. Even during the pandemic, there's online tutoring they can, they can access. There's drop-in tutoring where they can go to an online room and get help in math and science um, many times throughout the week. So it's, it's a great benefit to our students, you know, who are, like I said, they're taking really tough, tough classes and, and they, they may need the extra support for the first time in their whole high school career. 
Um, so, you know, one of the great benefits of this program is not only do they get the, the transferable credits, um, but when they graduate, they're, they're graduating with, with their high school diploma after their fifth year, uh, which means when they're applying to colleges, colleges view them as first-time freshmen. And the benefit of that is that they're going to be eligible for all the freshman merit-based scholarships, and those are the best scholarships that universities offer to students. Um, so, you know, a, a student who, say, went to Fordson or Edsel or Dearborn for four years and got their high school diploma, and then they went to HFC for two years and got an associate's degree or wanted to transfer their credits, if they wanted to apply to U of M Dearborn or Wayne State or U of M or any of the, the local universities, they would not be eligible for those, fr those really nice freshman scholarships. They, they could get a transfer scholarship, but those, those aren't quite as, as nice as the, the freshman scholarship. So our students in the early college program, in the Collegiate Academy, they really get the best of both worlds. They're, they're getting those 60 credits and they're still eligible for, for the really nice scholarships and all the financial aid through FAFSA. Um, and, and, you know, they're still going to, even though they're applying as freshmen in terms of financial aid, as soon as they apply and get accepted, they bring all those credits with them and universities see them as, as juniors in college with, with over 60 credits. Uh, one of the things that's different about uh, the Collegiate Academy compared to the early college, um, we do not provide transportation. You know, the program starts in 11th grade, so a lot of our students can, can drive uh, but they're going to have to get to, to uh, the campus and back on their own. And that's all I have to share. Thank you. All right. Uh, outstanding, outstanding information. Um, did you get all of that, right? Did everyone get all that? <laughs> I, I want to remind everybody that these presentations uh, are normally done in the schools in person and, and can be hour-long presentations. I think John's presentation, Dr. Barrell's presentation, is somewhere around three hours and 45 minutes when he's on his own. Um, <laughs> yeah, I could squeeze you back in here. We do, have, yeah, for 15. Um, so they did an outstanding job of condensing down what is really uh, a lot of robust information. And all of that information is available uh, by going to the, the, uh, the Dearborn Public Schools website, and then you can find these other websites there. And uh, we have contact information as well uh, that we will be sharing uh, and, and where you can just kind of dig in and you can reach in and you can um, also call all of these folks and talk to them and talk to the principals and talk to these counselors. So that way uh, we can answer some of those specific questions. I know there were some questions coming up on Facebook during this presentation. Um, and I know our staff was right there answering many of those. So I think a lot of those things were answered. There were a couple of uh, points that I did want to touch on. Um, with, the, uh, with the early college programs, that is the program, that is the program that you enter in ninth grade and you're there to, for the 13th for five years. Uh, it is a health program, it is a manufacturing program, and it is the uh, early education program. Um, though that program is done, uh, entrance into that program is done on a lottery system. Uh, we have great demand for that program, and there is limited number of seats available. Uh, students do have to be proficient uh, on the plan test and uh, show that they are performing at grade level. Uh, but other than that, um, then there is a lottery. For the um, Collegiate Academy program, students take the plan test uh, as well, and I'm sorry, the PSAT test uh, that is done in 10th grade. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I have my uh, uh, helpers here to get me through all of this. Um, and uh, students then uh, are eligible for that program and we take all students uh, who are interested uh, can, can enroll into that Collegiate Academy program. So that was one little difference. Uh, to the staff here, we had a suggestion come in that perhaps uh, a spreadsheet could be created to kind of show all the different options and uh, all the different items. I don't know if that's, it's on the blog. Okay, so it's on the blog. There we go, we, had, we, we, we took care of that and uh, got that one out of the way. 
you know, uh, I mentioned when we started this program that uh, it really is about meeting the individual learning needs and learning styles of every child. You know, I mean, every kid growing up when they're, you know, five, six years old, you know, they may say they want to be a doctor or a fireman or, in my case, an airline pilot. That didn't work out. But anyway, um, uh, we all have those dreams, but as we grow up and uh, as we grow older, our interests do change and our skill sets change. And we find where we may be, where we, when we were very young, we may have a very strong interest in something. And that doesn't mean that we cannot pursue a, a, a career in that field. It just may mean that what we thought we were going to be doing in that field, it, we may find that we have a different interest as we grow older. And I think that that's really what we're trying to do here is provide students with those opportunities to learn where those interests lie, where their aptitudes lie as well. So, you know, we offer several different options uh, to explore the medical field. And, you know, we can find out where those interests are and where the student really is excelling and where they really want to end up being uh, in, the, in the medical field or in any of the other fields. I think, too, what this is important uh, to understand in offering all of these options to our high school students and to our students uh, is that um, uh, students have, have different interests, as, as I said, and, and they want to go in different directions. But I think, too, that we have to get away from some of the stereotypes that exist with certain professions or certain careers or different fields. And uh, at one point in time, a long time ago, back when, when I went to school and uh, there were dinosaurs and Fred Flintstone was there with me, um, we used to just uh, kind of put kids in certain tracks, right, and say, oh, you want to do this, so this is where you go. And that's not what we're all about. That's not what this is all about. Um, if you noticed, all of these programs uh, really have an emphasis on not just completing what we're completing at the high school level, but understanding that these students are going to have to go on after high school to pursue either certifications or two-year degrees, or four-year degrees, or some type of continuing education. And that's what these programs are doing. They're preparing students for that continuation once they leave us. You know, the Dearborn Public Schools has a 95% graduation rate uh, amongst all of our high schools. That's incredible. Our, our early college programs have a 100% graduation rate. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. That means that students are succeeding and we're meeting those learning needs of students and we're preparing them uh, for that next step. In addition, we have such a great gem and jewel right here in our city, our partnership with Henry Ford College. I don't know how many other school districts come to us, talk to the folks that you saw here tonight and ask them, how can we do this in our district? How can we do this in, in, in middle Michigan? How can we do this on the west side of the state? How can we do this in Ohio? How can we do this all across the country? We've, we have other people coming here to find out how we do it here in Dearborn. And, and it's because we have a awesome partnership. We are the last school district in the state to have a K-14 relationship. Our Board of Education not only oversees our district, but it oversees Henry Ford College as well. That means that it is a unique tie that no other school district has that opens up opportunities for our students that no other student in our state can have because we have that relationship. Our students are on the campus for these programs. They're experiencing that in 11th grade, in 9th grade, 10th grade, 12th grade. Our partnership with Ford Motor Company, our partnership with Henry Ford Hospital that allows these students in the early college programs to actually be there at the hospital in 9th grade getting that real world experience. You're not gonna find that in any other place, only here in the Dearborn Public Schools. What are you waiting for? Why aren't you enrolled in this district right now? So most of you who are watching are, and I'm glad you are. 
So take advantage of these programs. Take advantage of this wealth of knowledge that all of these folks here tonight uh, presented and are available to share with you uh, at, at any time. That's my sales pitch. Um, I, I'm looking and uh, just wanted to see if we had any more questions come in. I'm, I'm going to take a look here at the sheet. Uh, we had a, a form there. I don't really see anything else. Like I said, I know there were some questions on Facebook, and I know a lot of staff members were jumping in to handle those questions, um, and we will continue to do that. Um, I will turn to my colleagues here who are joining me to see if there are any other closing comments that any of you feel the, any of you want to jump in on. No, not at all. Great. We are going to end early. Believe, isn't that amazing? I'm giving you back uh, six minutes of your night, right? Okay. I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. Thank you all for taking some time to be a part of this program and to learn about these awesome, awesome opportunities that we offer the students here in the Dearborn Public Schools. Have a great night. And uh, as always, remember, let's all mask up. <laughs>